Hi right, everybody, we're going to take a look at this here. So uh, as you can see in our lecture notes here, uh, we want to determine the location of a point R on this line segment so that PR and RQ are in this 1 to 3 ratio here. So essentially what we're going to be doing is going to try to pick some point here. We want to find this point here, R. We don't know where it is. We want this to be at a 1 to 3 ratio. Now, note the numbers I'm writing here are not actual distances. This just represents ratios here. So this is essentially x and 3x here. Now. This means that this therefore tells you that PR, if you think about it, PR is a quarter of PQ because you have a one to three ratio, you have four parts total, that's one part, that's three parts here. So this seems like it's going to be a job for midpoints here, in fact, right? Because that means if PR is a midpoint, if PR is a quarter of the entire segment here, then the entire thing we're going to be looking for midpoints. So one strategy that we can attempt is to find a midpoint here, let M be the midpoint of PQ, figure that out, and then get R from there because R will be the midpoint of PM, right? We can do something like this here. And again, I apologize, my diagrams might not necessarily be to scale, but that's okay. So M, as you can see here, is just a midpoint. So if you remember our midpoint form is just the average of the coordinates. So it's negative 4 plus 16 over 2. And then we have 3 plus 13 over 2. So that is, uh, let's see, uh, it's 12 over 2 comma 16 over 2, which yields a 6, 8 here, right? So that means M is going to be at the point 6, 8. And now we can figure out where R is because R is the midpoint of PM. So now we can just do the midpoint again with just these two. So it should be negative 4 plus 6 over 2 and 3 plus 8 over 2, mm -hmm. right? So now this is going to be, let's see, negative 4 plus 6 is 2. So it's 2 over 2, comma, 11 over 2. So that is the point 1, comma, 11 over 2. That should be the location of point R. Now that, of course, is done with two midpoints here. Now. I want to go back to this idea of that one quarter business here, right? It makes sense, if you think about it here, since PR to RQ is a one to three ratio, it makes sense for R to be closer to PQ here. So in a way, you can think of it as sort of an average, but it's an average that's been weighted in one direction. So as an example of that, consider the following here, right? Let's say, you know, you're in a room with 99 other people, right? So it's you and 99 other people, 100 people in total in the room. You have $100 in your pocket and everyone else in, your, in the room has nothing. Now, what's the average amount of money that each person has in that room? Well, it should be the total amount of money divided by the total number of people. Since you're only only a person with money, it's $100 divided by 100 people, so that's a dollar a person here. Note that that $1 is extremely close to zero here. It's not, if it were just one and one, it was just you and one other person, you had 100, the other person had nothing, then it would be just the average of 100, zero, or 50. But because there's just you're being so outnumbered, by the people who have no money, they're going to pull the average much closer to them. This is, you know, a very basic concept. What is known as a weighted average here? So in a way, you can think of R as sort of a weighted average between P and Q, where these weights are one and three here. So this is fine, but you know, it may not necessarily work if you have uh, other ratios, other non-friendly ratios. So we're going to see if we can come up with another way of dealing with this problem without having to worry about midpoints here. So I'm going to try this again. Again, we're going to do this here, and we want point R to be something like this here. Again, point R is going to be the point, uh, we want this to be 1 to 3. We do not know where it is again. Now, if you remember the beginning of the previous explanation, we talked about how that this was one quarter of the entire segment here. And, you know, taking some inspiration from what came before, if you think about what's going on here, we can look at this big triangle like so, right? I can draw this big triangle. It's kind of like what we did when we did distance formula here. So here's point R, this is going to be my right triangle here, and we know that you know we have a horizontal and vertical here, so it should make sense that we can find the uh, locations of point R. So point R should be at the point 16 comma 3. Now, knowing that this is a 1 to 3, so we can also do the same thing here. I can drop an altitude like this. I'm going to call this here uh, S. Um, and I can also draw a horizontal like this here and do this. I'm going to call this here T, right? So note how in this situation here, well, let's take a look. Um, it shouldn't be too hard to show here that triangle PRS is similar to triangle PQR, right? Oh, I put R in two places. I apologize. Um, let's, uh, let's call this here uh, V. P, PRS here and PQV are similar to one another, right? And because they both got right angles and they both sh and uh, they share this angle over here. 
So it should make sense that that's going to be the case here. And note in this situation here, we have a one to three, we have a one to four ratio. No, it's not one to three, it's one to four because we have this PR to PQ is one part to four parts here. Okay, so in order to determine the location of point R, well, let's have a look. If we look at the big triangle here, we know we drew the big triangle for a reason. We see that QV here has a length of 10, right? Now that 10 here is just because we go from uh, y equals 3 to y equals 13, so that's a total of 10 up. Now note that in this situation here, right, this triangle PRS, all the sides of that triangle is one quarter the sides of the big triangle here. So if I want to determine RS here, we know that this is 10. Therefore, it makes sense for us because of this whole similarity here. We know the similar triangle size or proportion. Because that 1 to 4 ratio exists for hypotenuses, it should exist for all the other corresponding sides. So this vertical leg here and this vertical leg should also be in a 1 to 4 ratio. Therefore, TV here, we know TV in this case, should be a quarter of 10. So that's 10 over 4, or 5 halves here, right? So that means this is 5 halves, and therefore I can put this 5 halves over here. And since we started from 3, we can go up by 5 halves, 3 plus 5 halves here. So we get 3 is just 6 over uh, 2 plus 5 over 2, that gets us 11 over 2. And if you remember, that actually um, that agrees with the y-coordinate that we found before. Now, for a similar thing, we can do this for the x-coordinate here, right? We know PV here goes from negative 4 to positive 16 here, so this entire thing has a length of 20. Okay, and again, we have that 1 to 4 ratio here, so it makes sense that P PS is a quarter of PV here, and PV is 20, so therefore this is 5, and therefore we can add 5 to this. So we go from negative 4, we go 5 to the right, and that yields us the 1 we want here. So R is going to be at the point 1, 11 over 2. And if you note, that matches what we found here. So note that we actually have two different methods of doing this here. We can do this with the uh, we can do this here with our midpoints. We can also do this here with the ratios here with uh, similar triangles. And the similar triangle business is actually going to be really important to us. So I would suggest if you weren't sure about how to do this, rewatch the second half of the video here and just make sure that you understand how this works because we're going to take this to the next level.